Excellent, excellent. Welcome, everyone. We are excited that you have joined us. We're going to wait just one more moment and we will get started. Excellent, excellent. So it is about that time. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Janessa Dunn, and I use she, her pronouns. Um, I am the Director of Admissions here at Skidmore College, and I am very delighted to present to you all the art showcase for Skidmore College, and particularly for you all as admitted students. Um, before we get into our session this afternoon, or this evening, or this morning, wherever you all are in the world, um, I want to share with you once again congratulations um, for being admitted to the class of 2028. We know that this is an exciting time. It's a wonderful time, but we also know there are a lot of choices. It's a little bit stressful too. So my hope um, and our hope is to be able to provide you with the information that you need to feel as informed and as empowered throughout this process as absolutely possible. So again, we want you to be engaged. So I will share with you, there is an active Q&A feature at the bottom of of your screen or on your mobile device, however you are watching today. And we want you to ask us questions. Um, I am joined by two of my wonderful colleagues, Eric and Lisa, who are Associate Directors of Admissions, who will be able to answer some of your questions via um, the Q&A, but we'll also have the opportunity to um, ask your questions live to our wonderful panel, um, who I will introduce shortly. I would also share with you that tonight's session is recorded. So if for some reason you have to go to work or you need to start some homework and you need to be back and forth, you have to get yourself some dinner or breakfast wherever you are in the world, just know that this recording will be available to you in your admitted student portal. So we want to ensure that you have access to this at a point um, that makes sense for you. So at this particular time, I would love to introduce all of our panelists or ask our panelists um, to introduce themselves. I'll start over with Garrett. Um, and Garrett actually has a um, student um, as well um, who has joined them. Hi, everybody. Uh, so I'm Garrett Wilson, and I use he, him pronouns. I am a senior artist in residence in the theater department at Skidmore, and I teach uh, scenic design, uh, Sometimes lighting design, production, scenic painting. Uh, so all of the most of the the coursework that involves the visual part of making theater, that's what I uh, that's what I work on. Um, I have been at Skidmore. So this is my thirtieth year uh, full time at Skidmore. I did start a couple of years before that as a guest artist. Um, and uh, yeah, I've, I've uh, I have also. Uh, collaborated with many other departments on campus over the years. Uh, the Tang, which you'll hear about in a little bit from Tom, uh, the music department, uh, the dance department, world languages, uh, physical sciences. I've done projects with history department. So uh, there's, there's lots of opportunities that I've had to work with all kinds of different departments across campus. And that's that's been a joy for me. Uh, and then uh, I have uh, joining me tonight, Adelaide Lance, who is a student in the theater department. So. Why don't you go ahead, Addie? Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Adelaide or Addie. I go by both, so call me either. Um, I'm the year of 2025, which means I'm a junior. Uh, <laughs> I'm from Summit, New Jersey. Um, I'm a theater and English double major with a media and film minor, <laughs> which is a lot. Um, and then outside of all of my major stuff, I'm really heavily involved in the theater department. I was the assistant scenic designer to Gary for both of our uh, main stage and black box this semester, as well as the main stage last semester. So doing a lot of scenic work. Um, and then last semester, I also had the opportunity of having a playwrights lab. So I actually wrote a full play at Skidmore and got the opportunity to cast it um, and then have two separate readings with full audiences there. And it was a really great experience. Thank you both, Garrett and Addie. I appreciate that. I think we have some lots of questions that can be in line with your interest. Um, Matt, would you like to um, go next and introduce um, your student, Chelsea? Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Matt Wilt, and I teach in the art department here at Skidmore. 
Uh, I've been here for uh, 12 years now, and I teach specifically in the ceramics discipline uh, within the art department. And um, in terms of collaborations, I've done uh, collaborations with colleagues across campus, ranging from philosophy and, um, and uh, English uh, departments, some with geology, some with anthropology and archaeology as well. Uh, and uh, I am primarily a visual artist uh, making and exhibiting uh, ceramic artwork. And I am thrilled to have my uh, student, uh, Chelsea, here, who on my screen is directly below me down there. It's like a Brady Bunch grid here. And uh, I'll let Chelsea uh, do the introductions, but Chelsea is a senior and uh, poised to graduate and uh, taking on a new job in, uh, this summer as well. So Chelsea, take it away. Hi, um, I'm Chelsea. I'm a senior, as Matt said. Um, I'm a ceramics concentration, but I technically have two concentrations um, also in digital media, um, doing animation with Professor Sweeney. Um, yeah, that's, I only have a major, no, no double or no minor, but it's still great. Um, other things I do, I do work study for the ceramics studio. Um, I've worked at the Tang. Um, I currently work at the Schick as a gallery assistant, so I'm pretty involved in the studio art community. Um, yeah, I don't know. Were there any other questions? I forget. I don't think so. I think you've covered it, Chelsea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Chelsea, and thank you, Matt. Um, next, we have two wonderful um, panelists who have um, interesting perspectives here. So I'm actually going to call on Anna first and then over to Tom. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Anna Matthews. I'm a junior from the DC area. Um, I'm an education and religious studies double major and a studio art minor. Um, in the education department, I'm on the certification track to um, be certified to teach in the state of New York. Um, and with studio art, I mainly focus in drawing and painting. Um, I'm one of the head arts guides here. And uh, beyond that, I do have a couple other jobs, um, which I'll mention throughout. But I also have some experience within the dance department as well. Excellent, thank you, Anna. Tom? Hey everyone, I'm Tom Yoshikami. I'm the Assistant Director for Engagement at the Tang Teaching Museum, which is Skidmore's uh, art museum. And uh, in addition to kind of working with this larger engagement team at the Tang, I, I supervise you know, a, a number of employees and kind of half of the museum. I work very closely with um, student interns. We hire about 20 student interns every semester and a larger group called the Tang Student Advisory Council, which is a group of about 60 volunteer students that meet every other week. And these are students that are both studio art and art history majors, but a lot who are in various disciplines, pretty much every discipline. Um, we also run a, a, a pre-orientation program called Behind the Scenes of the Tang. So if you're interested in, um, in kind of learning more about the Tang when you come to campus, I would uh, encourage you to um, register for that. Um, and we do all sorts of, I mean, as Garrett mentioned, we, you know, we collaborate with, uh, with theater all the time. We collaborate with studio art and with dance and with all sorts of other departments. This week alone, we've got a talk that we're collaborating with, uh, the English department with, uh, tomorrow night, uh, and then music on, on Friday night. So that's all over the board. Nice to meet you all. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate both of you um, and all of you at this particular time. And I will share with you, we have a wealth of arts um, within the, the performing arts as well. I know you've heard a hint about dance. We have a robust, robust music department um, as well. And it is, um, it is senior recital season. Um, so there is an event just about every night in multiple events a day um, over the last couple of, uh, particularly over the last couple of weeks and the upcoming weeks. Um, so we will do our best to ensure that we're highlighting all of those areas that are very active in those seasons currently. Um, so to get us started, and I appreciate everyone who is um, filling information in the, in the Q and A. So we'll make sure that we we uh, come back to those questions. Um, but as we think about the visual and performing arts offered at Skidmore, and these are some questions for our professors here, and our um, our of course um, from Tom's perspective um, as assistant director of the Tain Teaching Museum. Um, can you share just about the wide variety of different um, programs that are offered? I know you all have spoken specifically about collaboration that are beyond the arts in particular. So do you mind highlighting those? Oh, 
Well, I, I'll start. Uh, um, so I, I think, you know, Skidmore is, is, uh, has been known for, uh, for a lot of years as an art school. Uh, so there, there are just a tremendous amount of opportunities, uh, and programs for students to, to pursue in the arts at Skidmore. Um, I mean, as we've already mentioned, you know, there's theater, there's the, the fine arts department, um, and Matt can provide some, some context about all the different, uh, different disciplines within fine arts that are represented within the department there. Um, the, the music department is amazing. Also, uh, we have a terrific dance program. Uh, there's an arts administration uh, minor uh, a program that's here on campus that's separate from all of those other arts groups. There's the Tang. Uh, there's a wealth of, of student groups also outside of the formal departments that, uh, that are uh, arts related. Uh, so, I mean, way too many to name. Multiple uh, vocal ensembles and vocal groups. Uh, sketch comedy and ad, ad lib comedy groups, dance music groups. Um, so there's there's a, just a there's an incredible array of opportunities in the arts. The um, other disciplines within the visual arts department um, that uh, Garrett was mentioning. I'm just trying to think off the top of my head. I think it's 10 separate disciplines and Chelsea can help me out here as well. Um, but I know from just starting from the ground floor up, um, I think of our ground floor is kind of the heavier, uh, physically heavier, dirtier areas. So there's sculpture, ceramics, uh, metal smithing, printmaking and textiles on the ground floor. And they have a lot of physical, you know, uh, heavy facilities, uh, furnaces, kilns, um, things of that nature, looms, presses. Uh, then we go up to the second floor, which is digital media, photography, both digital and um, old school darkroom photography as well. Um, com design, uh, like graphic design. And then we have on the third floor, uh, a variety of different painting and drawing studios. And I feel like maybe I'm missing something, Chelsea. Does that cover all the disciplines within our building? I think so, yeah. Yeah, so there's a great diversity of disciplines within the building. And a, like Chelsea mentioned before, um, involved both in ceramics and in digital media. And we have lots of students that are working in a variety of disciplines throughout their four years at Skidmore. Yeah. And one thing to add, if you are on the major pathway, the way that it's set up is to allow you to kind of sample from each um, category. So it's it gives you like a really wide variety. It gives you choice, but it also forces you to take a little bit of everything so that you can really like hone your interest. I will also add that there is a burgeoning film and media studies program um, and uh, a documentary studies program on campus, uh, which teach a lot of film making courses as well. Um, and then just to speak to the interdisciplinarity of it all, and I see some questions coming through from the chat of, you know, um, do our arts kind of intersecting with other uh, with other disciplines at all. I would say it happens all the time and not only in programming, um, but I can't tell you the number of students that I've worked with that are, you know, a, you know, theater and neuroscience major. And it seems to be common that students are, are, are um, you know, taking courses in the arts and not in the arts at the same time. Um, but it's it's very common for, uh, for the arts to kind of be involved in everything. I would like to emphasize just what Tom mentioned. Um, I had the opportunity um, to, to witness one of our student ambassadors actually in the admissions office perform their senior recital in our beautiful um, San Kale Music Center um, and who is um, had the opportunity to double major in music um, as well as neuroscience. Um, in a lot of different ways and is doing beautifully in both and as a member of the Honors Forum and pursuing a capstone for each of those areas. Um, and so there is a great deal of flexibility um, and ability and a support from faculty members um, to support students. I actually met her neuroscience faculty member at that performance, which was great. So there's a great deal of community um, that is really exciting um, in that way. So thank you for, for mentioning that, Tom. So 
I have a question for our students here. Um, I'm curious to know how did you all, or how have you all rather, connected with faculty? What did that look like? How early were you able to kind of establish the, that level of collaboration that we've talked about? I can start. Um, I feel like I would say on any tour I give that faculty is the thing that you can't find on any website, but it, it's truly what sets Skidmore apart. Um, I have so many great examples of faculty um, taking interest in me personally and um, focusing on my learning. Uh, one of my favorite projects I did here was an interdisciplinary project that my professor, oh, uh, my professor, made happen for me because she brought in a guest speaker who was working on her graduate thesis at Bank Street College, and this was in the education department, um, who was writing a book about her little brother and focusing on disability. I went to that professor and I said, hey, I'm really interested in illustration. Do you think she'd be interested in someone illustrating that book? And I was able to do that with her and um, help her support her in her graduate capstone. I think as soon as I have a moment to breathe, I'm going to work on that book and we're going to work towards publication. But that professor, without that professor's support and excitement, and she was like, oh, I have so many other projects you might be interested in then too, I wouldn't have been able to do that. Um, I could talk in the theater department. I love all of the professors there. Um, it really is every single one of them supportive, whether you're in an acting discipline, directing, you're behind the scenes, no matter what you're doing, all of the faculty know who you are. Um, so it's really great. Uh, me and Gary just started working together on actual shows this year. Um, but I took his class the my first year, second semester, and it immediately clicked. Um, he was unfortunately on sabbatical last year, so I didn't get to work with him, but I, we had an interim professor who's a scenic designer in New York City. So getting also the opportunity to work with professors who they bring in who specialize in that. I've had that opportunity as well as playwriting is one of my other big interests, and they're always bringing in new playwrights. Um, getting to share your work with those people as well as students is really great to have that opportunity to connect to those professors. Yeah, I, I would start by saying that I've never had a professor here who hasn't been good in some ways. Like, I've never had like an outright terrible experience. And I think like the more you take a class, the more you get to know, the more you take a class in specific discipline. Obviously, I've taken ceramics with Matt now five times, I think four, maybe. I don't know. So you just like build on the professor learning about your art style and you learning about like it essentially just um the critique aspect of like growing your own work um is really valuable to just work with the same mentor for a while um me and matt have been working on a pretty really cool project um which i guess he could talk more about where um he's writing a book and it was kind of um brought up to me because i also mentioned before i do digital media um, and so this project is kind of doing like digital illustration for this um, textbook that's being worked on. So um, Professor Sweeney, who is the chair of the art department here, I do digital media with her and she was like, hey, you do this and you do ceramics and this is like an overlap. Um, so I was brought into the project that way. And it's been really cool um, to, you know, bounce ideas off of one another, me and Matt, like I show him um or he gives me like diagrams of like what he wants to be drawn and I can do those that work for him um and learn more about ceramic history in the process so that's been a really cool project um that I'm really glad to have had the experience with um but yeah things like that happen all the time in the arts departments like there's so much room to like learn from professors and I feel like I feel like they learn a lot too from students as well yeah I absolutely love all of those answers. And, and again, for our audience who continues to ask, ask your questions, thank you. Um, we're going to actually start to infiltrate some of those questions in our conversation because I think there is so much in alignment um, based on what our panelists have shared. And so there are a couple of questions that are specific um, to our panelists here. And Adelaide, you have the opportunity to mention how much you love theater, but we... <laughs> 
I have a student here who wants to know more. So can you share a little bit about um, what is one of the, the elements or the attributes that stood out to you um, and why Skidmore, you know, in that space? Yeah, um, I think the thing I love most about the theater department is you're not stuck in one role, um, especially going in. One of the first things any theater student will tell you is that you come in expecting to love one thing and kind of stick with that. And then you find a whole range of other things that you're interested in. I always love to bring up that I acted all throughout high school. Um, that was like my thing. I didn't do anything backstage. Um, I don't act at all anymore. Um, I solely do scenic work right now as well as playwriting um, and I love it and it's so fun the theater department is really a community of people all just wanting to support each other I know a lot of people are also act are asking about like auditions and acting wise um, that's open to everyone to the greater Skidmore community um, and we're even those people who get casted who aren't necessarily involved in the theater department directly, we're bringing them into our community, into our little bubbles and treating them all the same. And it's really great. <laughs> I love it so much. I'd like to just uh, touch on that also about, you know, the audition process. Uh, so it is open to any student and we often, I would say even regularly cast uh, not only students that are not majors or minors, uh, but we cast first years coming in in major roles in our department and productions regularly. What, part of the philosophy of the department is to, in casting our productions, to make sure that there is a mix of different uh, class years in each of the casts. And then that way, uh, we're bridging the generations of students and, and allowing them to have similar experiences. And uh, students that are earlier on in their college careers have the opportunity to work alongside students that are in their later in their careers and maybe have more experience. And so there's a there's a terrific sense of community in that as well. Yeah, I'll just say because I had a playwrights lab, so I actually did get to cast fellow students in my own work. Um, I know for a fact I had one of my actors was like a history major hadn't done any theater since high school and was a junior. So it was great to have them incorporated back into this. I had, out of a cast of seven, I had three freshmen or first years. Um, and like, I wasn't thinking about their year. I was basing it solely off of their talent. Um, so it's really, it doesn't matter if you're a first year coming in. It doesn't matter if you fell off a little bit with theater and want to rejoin. We really are welcoming to everyone and you, everyone has an equal opportunity there. I love to hear those perspectives. And thank you both, Addie and Garrett, for sharing those as well. Um, so there are some additional questions that are coming in the chat, and some of them are related um, deeply into the visual arts um, in this space. So I'm going to lean on Tom to kind of talk a little bit about what is the Tang Teaching Museum. Um, I know folks have heard of it, but not really quite knowing what it is. Um, and then, of course, for any other panelists um, afterwards, being able to talk through how do students showcase their work, particularly in the visual arts here at Skidmore? Sure. Um, so the Tang uh, has a permanent collection of almost 20,000 objects. Um, we've been open for almost 25 years. So if you are here in 2025, you can help us celebrate our 25th anniversary. Um, and we are a teaching museum, which means that built into everything we do is pedagogy. Um, and so, you know, we have um, about 12 to 16 exhibitions that we um, that we put on every year in various uh, uh, sizes and scale, uh, shapes and scale. Um, and so some of those are single object exhibitions that students can curate. So one of the things that um, every student who's a member of that student advisory uh, panel or board, um, a volunteer group, even as a first year student can come in and propose projects and can curate a show, um, which will, you know, give right press releases of, you know, students give tours for, um, and so that can happen kind of right away, which is great. Um, so everything from, you know, really small exhibitions to really large exhibitions that are up for, you know, um, six months or even up to uh, up to a whole year. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we work very closely with faculty in, in pretty much every discipline to try to engage them with whatever shows that we have up. So I would say every week we have maybe 12 to 20 classes come through the museum, and that's um, for either cores of exhibitions from our curators or for, um, uh, you know, being able to look at objects in that permanent collection. So we have um, registrars that are devoted to, pull, to working with faculty to pull certain objects and uh, even things that aren't on view to help them teach whatever they want to teach. Um, and students too, can, if, if they want to research something, you know, recently we, I had a, 
I worked with an art history student who um, found something in the collection that had never been shown before. And she ended up researching it and writing about it for her art history uh, capstone project and then presented that um, you know, uh, publicly, like a public um, talk at the museum where she, you know, she showcased the, the object and, and spoke about it. And, and that's going to turn into um, a collection story on our website. Um, so, you know, we're, we're working constantly with faculty and with students on all sorts of programs that, that they try to come up with. Um, and, and, you know, we see ourselves as facilitators for, you know, what faculty are teaching uh, and what students are interested in as well. You, the second question you asked, Jessa, was um, kind of students showcase of artwork. You know, I'll say the, the big one for us and one of the real highlights for me every year is that um, in May, um, after the end of the semester, uh, the Tang hosts the annual um, Studio Art uh, Senior Thesis Exhibition, which is really great. And so um, I think Chelsea's going to have uh, a piece, or right, like a section of the museum um, coming up. And that's something that students spend, you know, a lot of time on and work really closely with our, uh, uh, you know, install staff trying to figure out, you know, what it looks like. And then the shows are always fantastic. It's amazing to see just the quality of student art. Um, and there are often performances that come, go along with that. And so that's that's one of the, the, you know, the real big things that we do to showcase student art. I'll just kind of say a plug for um, something that I've been working on recently with students is uh, we host every year something we call the Tang Party, which is an outdoor kind of uh, ephemeral exhibition. Um, so for one night, it's like the last Friday in, in April, um, we invite students to apply for you know, they can, we will grant people $150 for funding to help uh, create whatever they want to create, and people create site-specific uh, art pieces outside of the museum. So nothing inside the museum, we kind of close up the museum, but there are projections all over the museum, things hanging from trees, hanging from the building, performances, and it's just a three-hour, you know, a three-hour showcase of kind of the best that, um, you know, the most creative students can be. Um, and the great thing about that is that we often get a lot of students who did a lot of art in high school, but, you know, for whatever reason, they're more focused on, you know, um, another discipline uh, as a major, but this is an opportunity for them to kind of flex those creative muscles and do something, do something uh, a little bit different. Um, but that's coming up. So if anyone is going to be in town at the end of the month, uh, come check out the Tang Party. Yeah, just to add to that, um, super excited about the Tang Party. I'll be showing an animation there, so that's fun. Um, and the Senior Thesis Exhibition, like you mentioned, Tom. Um, another great spot to showcase is uh, the Schick Gallery. Um, every every spring semester, there's uh, the student show, which is essentially just any people, any um Anyone who's taken an art class at Skidmore and made a piece of art at Skidmore can um, submit. And then an outside jury comes and um, chooses pieces for the show. So you don't have to be a major to enter. Um, last This year we got like 200 submissions. Um, so it's really popular and really fun just to, um, the openings are always really fun to come and see your friends and everyone sees their work. Um, there's also the junior show um, so if you're an art major and you're a junior, um, same semester, this semester, spring semester, um, after it's like the student show and then there's another one in the middle and then the junior show kind of happens at the same time as the senior show. So you get to see, and that one is like selected, um, um, professors select, um, students and like volunteer them to be a part of it. So you get to see what the junior class is working on and the senior class. So it's really fun. So the Schick is definitely, um, that's the gallery that's like inside the art building and it's still like a really nice little community there as well, yeah. I'll also add that there's a small gallery in the Case Center, which is the student center called the Case Gallery. Um, and that students can uh, students can book and kind of curate their own shows, whether it's their own art or their friend's art. And so that's something that, you know, it can be a one day thing or a two week thing, but another uh, location and space for students to show their artwork. 
Thank you, Tom and Chelsea, for sharing all of those wonderful ways in which students can showcase, but also have fun at the end of the day. I'm really excited to witness um, <laughs> the party outside of the Tang Museum, um, Tom, later on um, in the semester. And I believe one of our students in the Q&A also asked specifically about those art spaces and what those are. So thank you so much for sharing um, an overview of what those look like for us. So there are a couple of questions that are geared more towards and the performing arts, but also for the collective group here, um, there is an extra, um, not an extra, but a, a question specifically about um, are many professors actively doing art in the community or New York City? Um, and if a student mentions this area, um, what are those opportunities to be connected? And this can be in the both visual or the performing arts here. So I can speak about the, the theater department specifically. Um, and maybe a little bit about dance as well. Um, so in the theater department, uh, most of the faculty are involved in making theater in other places. Uh, so I was the I was the um, the resident scenic designer for um, uh, Lake George Opera for eighteen years, which is right in the community. Um, and I've also been involved with Saratoga Shakespeare for many years. Uh, but also I work all over, um, you know, in other places. And that's true of all of the faculty in the department. And uh, we do bring students along on those, you know, with those opportunities. We, you know, students that have interest. Um, I've had students work alongside me as assistants uh, in, in other places outside of the campus, um, brought students along, you know, or uh, helped students acquire internships in companies that I was working in. Um, so, so, Yes, I mean the faculty in the department, in the theater department, for sure, are doing that, and I th I think that's true for all of the art departments. They, the faculty, are engaged in the local community and the broader, you know, region, um, and in making their art and displaying it, and and offer students opportunities uh, to assist them or or uh, share in that experience um, in, in lots of different ways. I would just echo that. I think all of the department within um, the studio arts are very active exhibiting artists. And I, um, you know, I uh, feel similarly myself in that I exhibit uh, nationally and occasionally internationally when the opportunities arise. And so um, try to be a very active participant within the discipline of ceramics in my case. And, uh, and uh, mixed media sculpture and things of that nature. And um, my colleagues as well exhibiting nationally and internationally uh, highly regarded artists, um, exhibiting artists in their own right and, and um, very involved teachers as well. I think you also see a lot of professors bringing art into their research that they're doing in other disciplines. One great example is I have a close friend who's a neuroscience and dance major, which we joke is the ideal Skidmore student. Um, and she's doing research with a bio professor who's, or a neuroscience professor who does biology classes. Um, and they are doing research on how dance affects a child's brain. So that's a professor who's outside of our art department, but still bringing art into their own studies. And we see that across a lot of other um, areas of study as well. Thank you for all for those wonderful answers there. And we talk a, quite a bit about overlap, you know, collaboration between different disciplines here at Skidmore and being a liberal arts college, that is what we're all about. We want be, uh, students to embrace interdisciplinary um, opportunities. There is an opportunity for students to pursue one area and that is arts administration. So those who are thinking about the management and the marketing um, um, of management. So do any of you all um, uh, have any any particular tips of advice of how to even approach that, um, you know, at, at Skidmore. Um, but in particular, for those who are not um, aware, um, do you mind describing it? Um, so, I can explain what yeah, the go ahead, Anna. You do that. minor is. Um, arts administration minor is a pretty unique um, area of study to Skidmore. Um, it was a gift from the Zankel family, um, and it has grown a lot over the past many years. Um, it is a 
minor that focuses on the business side of art and specifically focuses even more on nonprofit organizations. Students who are in the arts administration minor are expected to be involved in the arts, whether that be taking being a major, the majority are majors, um, but that can also be um, just taking a lot of classes within the arts. Um, the arts administration minor also has the requirement of doing an internship in your time here, and maybe others can give better examples, but our, um, one of my favorite examples is I have a friend who did their internship in um, bringing art into um, local Saratoga schools. Awesome. Yeah, I think that, I mean, I was going to say much the same thing. You did a great job, Anna. Um, I think, you know, we have a lot of theater students that uh, that take the arts administration minor. Uh, most of the so uh, in the theater department, a lot of the functioning of the department is really done by our students. So we have um, uh, we have ten student employees in the scene and scene shops. Uh, I think eight in the costume shop and another eight in our management area. And most of the publicity work, the front of house, the ticketing, the you know. Uh, um, uh, visual media is all done. All that work for the department is done by students, and those many of those students that are engaged in that also are in the the arts admin minor, and they develop those skills in tandem with the work that they're doing in the department. That's excellent. Thank you both, Garrett and Anna, for sharing more about the arts administration. I think it's a phenomenal program. It's highly interdisciplinary and um, and tactical as it relates to um, students um, and their experience of how they want to apply their wonderful training um, after graduation. So it's or even during their time here at Skidmore, which is really exciting. Um, so there are several questions here that talk a little bit more into those interdisciplinary pieces. And so I'm going to try to collaborate and to overlap several of these here um, from several people. Um, there is a specific question regarding double majoring. So for those students who are pursuing different disciplines, even those that are outside of art, how does that work? Do you feel overwhelmed? How do you approach it? Um, and in particular, if we can ask Anna, particularly about how are you able to balance dance and all of these different elements, our history, there's so many different um, ways in which you're engaged and also Adelaide as well. Yeah, so I would say I'm a pretty busy person. Um, <laughs> I do have a double major, both education and religious studies, and then studio art minor. Um, one thing that's nice, uh, one thing that's important to think about when thinking about double majoring and minoring is the time that each class takes. So all of our art classes and our labs are a longer chunk of time, three hour art classes. So we, I talk a lot about to my friends who are science and arts, that that's as overwhelming as my schedule might be. Um, I think the one thing that makes my life very easy um, is the fact that I'm doing everything that I do. I know this sounds very cheesy, but I do everything that I do because I love it. Um, so it doesn't feel like work. Um, today, I went to my, um, I had, Wednesdays are my favorite day because in the morning I go to elementary math class where I'm just practicing fractions. Um, I have my painting class for a couple of hours and then afterwards I'm working on preparing to write my capstone thesis next year. Ah, um, so it's all different, all my different areas I actually have on Wednesdays and they're really interesting to me and I get to really engage and go um, full throttle into each of my areas. Um, I think that balancing that and I also have a number of jobs, including tour guiding, research assistant, um, peer academic coach and uh, residential assistant, excuse me, um, I still find that I have time to enjoy myself and um, hang out with my friends. I think it's just about doing things because you love them, not because you feel like you need to have more on your plate. Yeah, so I'm also a double major with a minor. Um, I'm a theater in English, which I think kind of go a little bit more hand in hand. I've had a lot more classes overlap in those two disciplines. Um, but again, two areas that I really enjoy. So uh, I like being in those classes and going to them. Um, and then my film and media minor, which is um, an interdisciplinary minor. Basically, uh, there's a few classes in the minor itself, but a lot of the classes and how you kind of declare yourself as a minor come from other 
um, academics. So a lot of my theater classes, a lot of my English classes have actually fallen under that. And so I kind of accidentally minored in it. Um, and I'm kind of finishing up the last few classes of it now. Um, but definitely am busy like Anna. It's a lot to do, but definitely a lot of fun. Unlike Anna, I actually don't have classes on Wednesdays, which you would think would be you know, a free day for me. It's not. <laughs> I do a lot of work still outside of class times. I was in the theater department today doing some extra work. Me and Gary are working on some scenic stuff to kind of brush up my skills on that. Um, and then I also am a tour guide as well. So I was doing that earlier. So I'm always busy. I'm always doing stuff, but I'm enjoying everything that I do. It's a overwhelming and there's a lot going on, but I never feel like it was a mistake to take on this much. I really enjoy having this much to do and being involved on campus doing stuff. Yeah, I want to just say, um, in addition, I, I came in wanting to do both psych and art. And while I haven't, while I'm not actually a double major, I still have kind of taken it upon myself to like take psychology classes outside of my art classes. And it's been just as great as like it it's a way to balance where if you don't end up double majoring um you can still totally take classes in other disciplines and have that balance um and kind of just like echoing um what Adelaide and Anna were saying I think one thing about the people that I've met here is just everyone's super super hard working and if you love what you're doing you can make it work and if you come in with high hopes of like double majoring and doing and it doesn't work out it's going to be okay too because you can still take things that are interesting because you're interested in them so either way it's great and I also just add even if you are a double major and you're interested in other stuff because we're a liberal arts school so we have those other requirements that you have to do great excuses to take cl other classes you're interested in I love mythology so I took a religion studies course all about mythology for my global cultural perspectives class so it's it's like I'm still advancing my degree and getting everything that I need to get done, but I'm having a little fun taking a few detours along the way too. I absolutely love it. And thank you all so much for sharing just a lot about the flexibility, but just the journey. And there is a question specifically for Chelsea um, in the Q&A um, regarding how many classes did it take for you to determine your major um, and how did you know it was right for you? Yeah, well, I knew I wanted to be an art major coming in, um, but if I think within the art major, you have to pick a concentration um, and so that's kind of its own process. There's not, there's not a, sorry, there's not really, um, you don't really have to decide what you want to do your thesis in until your last year. Um, so the major really is just about exploring. I thought I was going to be a painting concentration and then took um, ceramics. What was it? My sophomore year? I don't even remember. I think freshman year, second, first year, freshman year. Um, and yeah, and I think it was funny too, because Matt was always like, you should be a ceramics concentration. And I was like, no painting. But then I took more painting. I took like the second painting class and I was just like, I don't know. I want to be doing clay. So it definitely took me going a little bit beyond the first class. Um, to both know what I wanted to do and not. So like I took um, more painting, realized I didn't like it as much as taking more ceramics, realizing I liked it. So it's it's a balance. And I think there have definitely been some semesters where I, um, there's always, uh, I guess, I don't know where my thought was going. You just have to take them and see, and it'll, it'll work out. Um, and I think, yeah, just following your gut about what you're actually interested in. Um, and also not worrying too much about the label of like, oh, I have to pick a concentration. It's really in your senior year, you you end up where you have been making the most work, essentially. And yeah. Yeah. And I think, Chelsea, you did maybe um, maybe it was last year uh, in your junior year that you were 
deciding or thinking you had already declared as an art major, but then I think in your junior year, you decided that you were going to concentrate more heavily in ceramics. And still, I think it was open-ended enough that you were thinking about digital media as well with some of your um, stop motion uh, animations and things like that also. And I just wanted to add one thing related to the double major, which is I think it's also completely fair to say, like Chelsea mentioned, where um, where you might opt to to not double major and not have a minor and things like that as well. And one of the things that I'm concerned about as a faculty member is making sure that people don't get spread too thin. And I think everybody obviously is very different and everyone has different kinds of um uh, time management and different kinds of workloads and course loads and things like that. And, and I also would readily admit that faculty are all very greedy for students time. And, uh, you know, uh, studio classes are three hours long, uh, twice a week. And, uh, and so it's, it's a fairly demanding, uh, schedule and there's a great deal of, uh, of skills that are taught, traditional craft materials like clay and metals and textiles and so forth. And so um, it's not, you know, that, that kind of double majoring, I think is, it's fair to say, is not for everyone. I've had students who started out that way and then opted to go one direction or another, sometimes staying within studio arts and sometimes moving into another discipline entirely. And so I think it's important to keep that in mind as well is that um, there's uh, it's it's it can be demanding of time. And uh, one student in particular, I remember in the past who was very, very over uh, overstretched and overcommitted a double majoring and maybe a minor thrown in there as well. And every club that you could imagine uh, she was a part of and eventually just had to kind of rein that in a little bit and, and focus on the things that. Uh, were most important to her. I, would, I just want to echo what, what Matt said, because I, I have a similar experience. Uh, and, you know, uh, in spite of, you know, what Addie and Anna are talking about, you know, how they're, what they're talking about uh, with their experience, uh, that that there are students also that I think feel compelled to double major and, tr and have three minors and uh, and try to do it all. And, and, uh, that's not right for everybody first, you know, it's, it's, it's certainly, I can talk about Addie. Addie manages all of the things that she does very, very well. Um, uh, but that's not true for everyone. Uh, and so it's the important thing is to try and, fi and find your own, what's right for you and, and what works for you. And to recognize that, uh, sometimes it is better to just focus on the one thing and do that really well and have an in-depth and rich experience in that. Um, and, and, uh, so, so yeah, uh, I think that that's something to think about anyway as you as you're navigating not only the choice about where you're going to go to college, but once you make that decision, what you choose to do while you're there. And it's something that evolves over your your time as a student, and you know as you learn about yourself and what your interests are. That is excellent advice um, for any student you know who is going through this process, but particularly within this subset of the arts where there's a great deal of focus, there's a great deal of attention, and also just to have that type of support amongst faculty is really special. Um, so thank you for highlighting um, all of those elements there. So as we think about the Skidmore experience while a student is here, right? Um, let's kind of fast forward a little bit. What happens when they leave Skidmore? Um, and so for our faculty, as well as um, uh, our students here, I know we have a wonderful senior who will be making um, their way over. Um, can you share a little bit about where your students may have ended up? And Tom, you know, for students who have interned, for those whom you have taught um, in that space, um, where have students ended up after graduation and um, what types of supports did they have during their process? I'll tell you a little bit about um, mm -hmm. students that I've worked with at the Tang. You know, certainly uh, we, we work with a lot of students, so not all of them want to go into museum work or into the arts. Um, but those that do, uh, I feel like they're are fairly well connected once once they leave. And so um, just last week, I had a student uh, from 2019 who got a job as the the head graphic designer at the fabric workshop, which is a 
terrific uh, contemporary art museum in Philadelphia. Um, so lots of, you know, we have students that are at the Whitney and at the uh, at MoMA, um, but also a lot, a lot moved to New York City after graduation and, and work for galleries or, you know, start as kind of studio assistants with artists. Um, and, uh, and I feel like, you know, the staff here and, and the faculty as well are always really happy to kind of introduce them to people, make those connections. And, and you know, I'll say something about being such a small uh, school, you know, when, when visiting artists come through and other folks come through, you know, students get to meet them and, and you know, get to, you know, get their contact info and uh, often make connections just, you know, uh, in an informal way that leads to jobs or internships after college, which is really great. Um, I have uh, a variety of different um, like um, places where students go after after graduation. Chelsea, um, uh, due to her, you know the efforts that that that, um, that she's made over the past couple months has applied to several different opportunities, craft schools, um, things of that nature. Um, Oh, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, Peters Valley, uh, Chelsea was applying to and, and just recently found out um, about a new job uh, opportunity, I think, starting in June in Vermont, which is fantastic. And uh, I encourage students to apply to as many different things as they can find on their own and also things that I might suggest as well with the idea that um, from experience, you know, the more things that, you know, you cast a wider net and you have more opportunities. And uh, I really credit students like Chelsea because, I, you know, I feel like that uh, that old saying, luck is a residue of design. And it's the students that really are out there, you know, actively seeking things that really have the most opportunities. Um, and so last year, uh, fellow students of Chelsea's um, Frank uh, is a student who graduated last year who's working out in New Mexico where he's from working at a ceramic uh, uh, supply place where he has a studio. He's in the process of applying to some some graduate programs, some MFA programs now um, and also aware that he may, you know, he may or may not get into those programs. And so he's got work uh, within the discipline while he's continuing to make his work and applying to graduate programs. And uh, Chelsea is going to be working at a production pottery um, starting in over the summer, which I think is going to be a fantastic learning experience, a con continuation of like um, uh, on the job learning, you know, while while do learning while doing. And uh, another student who graduated last spring a year ago, Jasmine, is working in New York City at Christopher Spitzmiller, a studio in, in New York City, uh, makes very high end um uh, ceramics. And um, interestingly, because so many students do want to work in New York, Jasmine was born and raised in New York and is is really looking forward to leaving New York. And so Jasmine's actively pursuing other opportunities outside the city. But I have other students, Heidi, from several years ago, who's working in New York City now as a as the um, uh, as the photo technician at uh, at New York University, so lots of different avenues to pursue, and uh, and students uh, like Chelsea that that apply to you know lots of things have lots of different options as they move forward. Yeah, I'm excited that <laughs> it's secured. <laughs> um, I know that the point in time that most of you are at is not looking for a job. College is its first first hurdle, but um yeah, definitely I definitely feel like um lucky that within ceramics as an art there's also kind of a craft um career pathway. Um I can't speak to that for like the other art disciplines, but I know it's it speaks a lot that like all the people I was in class with last year are all like in the ceramics field like Matt said like we all come here and get really really hooked on it and then like want to keep doing it so um yeah I'm I'm sure it's the same for other majors um like my friends who are doing theater are all like applying and to a bunch of different things in that field um so yeah I think once you find what you want to do here is its first hurdle and then like the the career's will come and you will find stuff. And this is just like my first 
stepping stone and I'm very lucky that it is like working out and also don't worry about that right now <laughs> but yeah yeah, I would say, uh, I mean, it's, there's so many, I have so many students in, in, working in all kinds of different fields. I, I, uh, I've done a lot of different events or talked with a lot of parents of potential students. And, you know, uh, often there's a concern of about, you know, uh, my, my, my child wants to be a theater major. What are they going to do <laughs> when they when they leave, uh, you know, with a theater degree? And um, I think my answer to that is theater is the best degree to get as an undergraduate because you you uh, have to learn to work on, you, know, you have a timeline. There's, you know, this opening night is going to come no matter what. You work on a budget. It's all about communication, visual and written and, and you know, uh, and oral communication. There's so many skills that translate that, um, you know, and I think this is true of all the arts. You know, it's not just theater, uh, that there are, there are lots of opportunities upon graduation. So, you know, the theater department has had I mean, we've had students go on to amazing acting careers and uh, and really big time producing. So we have some very famous alums uh, who I'm sure you would recognize. I'm not going to name drop here. Uh, if you go to the theater website, however, there is a list of famous alums out there. Um, but, you know, also there we send students to, you know, elite gra uh, graduate programs every year um, uh, in, in the performing arts and in acting and design and uh, we have students that have gone on to become doctors and lawyers and architects and developers and, you know, uh, so many different fields. Um, so, and, you know, all over the country uh, and the world, you know, uh, got some some uh, very close friends that are alums that are working in Europe and the Far East. And um, so, you know, there's, there are just an enormous number of opportunities uh, coming out of school. And, and I, I think what Matt said is right, that uh, that it really has more to do with uh, uh, persistence and desire and an energy and the search and and having passion about what what you want to do and and then you'll find a you'll find a way uh, to do that thing and Skidmore is a really great place to prepare you for that. Those are excellent, excellent ways to for our students to really think through some of their processes and what is important to them. And so I know that we are almost approaching our time. So I'm going to wrap up two questions into one. Um, and this is a question that culminates, you know, our experiences. We have some questions here um, that relate to you. We have some students who are deciding, do I go to a school of design or to a conservatory? Um, what does going to Skidmore look like? And also the culture, how would you describe the culture? Um, what is that Skidmore difference if you all would like to briefly share with our students here? I'll say just a, something quick. I want other, I want the students to have a, a chance to respond to that question about culture, right? It's much better, I think, hearing it from them. But I want to just talk uh, about the the difference between Skidmore and uh, and you know uh, more of a conservatory kind of program, because at least in theater specifically, I think there are some real differences. Um, and and basically, that boils down to the opportunity to study a lot of different things as an undergraduate while while immersing yourself in the thing that you're passionate about. Um, so uh, for the, the for theater majors, we love the fact that our theater majors also are interested in other disciplines and bring that knowledge into the department and, and into the work that they're doing. The thing about being an artist is that having a strong foundation in lots of different knowledge and the understanding about the ways that uh, different knowledge bases intersect with each other and inform artistic work is really important. And uh, I think, you know, for myself, I would say that, that that students that have that foundation and then go on to graduate school are probably stronger artists for it. Um, and the, so the flexibility to, to be a studio art major, a ceramicist or a painter, and also be a dancer or be a physicist or, you know, whatever else your interest is, is, uh, is the thing that makes Skidmore a really strong experience. And conservatories don't do that. You know, when you go to a conservatory, you, at least for theater, you're siloed into a very specific thing. When you go to a conservatory, you are, you're going there as an actor or as a director, as a theater major. And there's much less opportunity to experiment, as Adelaide was talking about earlier, in different types, even different parts of that specific discipline. Um, 
And so there's also less opportunity to make discoveries at a time when you should be making discoveries and learning about yourself and deciding, you know, uh, what things are really important to you and what are not. Yeah, I would just echo that. I think that I I was choosing between art schools and liberal arts schools. Um, and for me, I just wanted more choice of other disciplines and being able to take being able to concentrate on art and also, you know, I took a class that was about like post-apocalyptic literature and I'm taking existential psych. And so the ability to be really honed into my craft for on the one hand and then also have just interesting classes that aren't really, that are super, super like niche and interesting um, that can just enhance being in college and learning different things um, that you wouldn't quite get at like an institution that's solely about art. Um, yeah, is really nice. Yeah, I mean, I've had similar experiences um, in theater, especially in my English classes. Um, there's a lot of professors that will like be in a certain department, but have interests in another department. So it's very easy to see where the artistic vibe could be in other disciplines. Um, I think also like maybe this might just be theater specifically, but also there's not the edge of competitiveness. It's more of a community. I mean, obviously we're all pushing each other to be the best that we can at everything, but it doesn't feel like you're competing with everyone around you. It it feels more collaborative. Um, it feels like you're helping each other, learning from each other. Um, and I think that's something that's great about kind of a school that still has of definitely an artsy vibe to it but isn't like consumed by the arts and that's the only thing that there is yeah I think I would echo every what everyone said um, when I was applying to Skidmore I similarly was considering art school but I knew that I had so many um, academic interests and I realized that I ended up I was not going to end up majoring in um, street art but I think that um I'm able to get exactly what I've been looking for and the quality of our arts in all of our programs um, were accredited equally with um, RISD and other art schools as well as like our dance program which unfortunately we didn't get much time to talk about it's fantastic um, but it also is contemporary level dance um, and I think that that ability to do that and be an ed major doing student teaching is amazing. I love all of those aspects there. Um, and thank you so much for sharing so much about your experiences. There are a couple of questions um, in our Q&A uh, where we would love to reconnect um, with our students. There are one in particular about more advanced classes uh, within those areas. And I think those are really specific questions that may be helpful by department um, in that space. And so um, hopefully we'll have the opportunity um, for our student to, to follow up with those questions directly. Um, but Again, thank you all so much um, for sharing all of your experiences. We have a wealth of knowledge and a wealth of amazing opportunities um, here at Skidmore, but also what is meaningful, knowing that it can look different for every student, uh, whether you are pursuing studio art um, and you are definitely into the ceramic area, which is exciting, Chelsea. I know Matt is really excited and proud of you as well. Um, and we also have students like Adelaide and Anna who are kind of able to take advantage of um, the, the interdisciplinary aspects of it that will be applying art in different disciplines, right, after graduation and vice versa, right? There are lots of different ways um, to engage. For all of our panelists, Garrett, Tom, Chelsea, Adelaide, Anna, and Matt, thank you so much for um, sharing this information. And for our admitted students, thank you for joining us um, in this evening. Again, this information will be recorded for you and available to you in your portal. And of course, you're more than welcome um, to reach out to um, our um, department contacts on our website if you have any follow-up questions. Thank you, get, thanks again, and we hope you have a great evening. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.